In tonight's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to crimp and solder different kinds of connectors to wires. Because a lot of people do not understand how to take this wire and connect it to a terminal connector. If you can connect these two pieces together, you can use wire to connect various components and build all sorts of electrical projects. Before we get started, let's talk about what tools are required to crimp these connectors. First, we have a three-point crimper over here, and this is for large wires such as 4 aught gauge. So if you have a large inverter or some big thick cables, this is what we use. If you want a cheaper method of crimping large wire connectors, we can use a hammer type crimp. And this is only $20 and you use a hammer with it to crimp large terminals. Next, we have a ratcheting crimper, and this works from 22 gauge up to 10 gauge. So for small wires, this works really well. These two are for odd situations. If I can't use my other crimpers, I will use these. I have this one right here and this one right here. What you do not want to do is use pliers to crimp. That is bad. Do not use this. That is not a true crimper. You need an actual crimper. Next, we have wire strippers. I like to use this one for large wires, and then I like to use this one for small wires up to 10 gauge. I also have cable cutters, and if you're careful and you know what you're doing, you can use these as a wire stripper, but I don't recommend most beginners doing this because you could hurt the wire itself. But it can be very useful if you know how. Next, let's talk about the connectors we're going to use. You want to use a high quality connector with high quality heat shrink. If you buy the cheap ones from Walmart, you will have problems and those will go bad and they can cause a fire. These ones I bought on Amazon and the heat shrink has glue on the inside and when you heat it up, it works really well. So I highly recommend using these kinds of crimp connectors. When I use larger gauge wires, I like to get them without insulation and I like to either add my own insulation or add electrical tape. So these are for four, six, and eight gauge wires with various bolt stud size holes. And then this is for a two gauge wire. And we have the Anderson power pull connectors and you crimp these little pieces before you make it and then you slide the connector on second. And we'll go over that in a minute. And then we have XT60 connectors back here and I'm gonna teach you guys how to solder this. This is a side demonstration at the end of the video that some of you guys might find useful, but that will be pretty fun. But the whole point of this video is learning how to crimp different sizes of wires because some videos only cover large wires, but this video We'll cover large wires and small wires. We're also going to go down to a 16 gauge wire. We also have a 10 gauge wire. We have an inline fuse and a 10 gauge, and we're going to use a special connector to connect these two together. So yeah, let's get started. For the first example, let's imagine that we're taking a 10 gauge wire and we want to connect it to this fuse box. First, we need to find the right terminal connector. So if you go over here to a box of terminal connectors, you will find the one that's shaped like this. And this fits the input terminal really nicely. It's the right size. And this is the right gauge wire for this fuse. So what we need to do is connect this wire to this connector. So first we're gonna strip this wire just a little bit, just enough for the metal to go inside of the connector and come out the other end. And you can see up close that the insulation goes all the way up to the metal. And you want it to be a perfect fit. The distance in here is how much conductor of the wire should be exposed. Next, we need to crimp it. So we're gonna take a ratcheting crimper and see how there is a yellow mark. Well, this is a yellow terminal connector. What we do is we put it inside of there and you can remove the wire and look at the inside of it and then you can watch it go in while it's in the ratcheting crimper and then you squeeze it really hard. And then after you do the termination, you pull it and make sure it cannot come out. It should look like this. It also has insulation, so we're gonna use our stove to heat this up and shrink it. So this part is pretty simple. All you have to do is expose it to a heat source. You can use a heat gun a lighter or whatever you have on hand. I have my stove and it works really well. Just get it nice and hot, but don't burn it. Don't put it too close to the flame. Give it a few seconds to get hot. You can see how the heat shrink shrinked up around the wire and it looks really nice. Let it cool for a second though before you touch it. Now that the connector is connected to the wire, we can unscrew this terminal all the way, push the connector inside where it's supposed to be, and then screw it down. And it should look like that. After you put it on there, you should feel and make sure it will not come off. It should be super strong. And that's it. That's how you connect a 10 gauge wire to a fuse box. Now we're going to remove this crimp connection and add this one. So first what we want to do is cut it just like that. 
and make sure it's flush and flat. Now what we need to do is measure and mark where we need to cut this insulation. Because this wire is going to go up to about here, we're going to cut it right about here. And then we're going to use a wire stripper to remove this insulation. And if you did it properly, none of the wires should have come off. It should be nice and flat. Now we can put the terminal connector over the wire and see if it is a good size. And that's perfect. I got really lucky with that. That is how you want it to look. Now that the wire is stripped, we can put the connector inside of the tool. And you just want it tightened down enough just to hold it there. Next, we want to put the wires inside the connector and make sure that everything is nice and tight. Once the connector is in there, you can add your wrench or impact gun. I like using the impact gun because it's easy. So now we want to put the wire inside of the connector and make sure that everything looks good over here. Look at everything, make sure it's set properly. And now you can tighten it down. So this is a pretty big one, so I'm going to have to use a wrench. And once you hit a point where it's really hard to tighten, that means that it is completely terminated and there is a true cold weld. So then loosen it, and there you guys have it. A full, true cold weld termination. And if you pull it, there is no way that this is going to come apart. Now the next step is to use heat shrink and protect this connection. What you will need to do is buy the proper size heat shrink for the application and use a heat gun. Measure and cut a piece of heat shrink and use some scissors to cut it off. And this is what it should look like. Also notice where the heat shrink goes up to. You don't want it going too far so that it would obstruct the connector. And you don't want it going too far back down this way because you want to protect this joint. For the next example, we're going to learn how to use a hammer type crimper with the other end of the two gauge wire. First, we need to strip the wire after we measure and mark it. So this is too short. I messed up. I need to remove more insulation. And now it looks perfect, so we can crimp this connection. So this is pretty straightforward. You just put it inside of the hammer type crimper. And before we whack it with a hammer, make sure that the wire is in there, because it can slip out when you're hitting it with a hammer. I like to hold the wire there while I'm hitting it. And you can tell that it actually terminated because it will, you'll hear a thud. It will change sound. And of course, we need to check it. So you need to yank on it. And this is a good termination, but you can tell that there's some space right here because the hammer type crimper, when you're hammering, it can push the wire out a little bit and that's not good. But this is totally acceptable. So I'm gonna cover it with electrical tape and it's job done. And this is what it should look like after you wrap it up with electrical tape. If you are doing a professional job or you're doing marine application or aerospace, you need to use the proper heat shrink for whatever regulation you need to follow. For most people though, black electrical tape works great. Now we're gonna use these two tools to connect an inline fuse to a 10 gauge wire. And we're gonna use one of these crimp connectors. Also keep in mind, use the appropriate connector for the size of wire that we're using. This is 10 gauge and we're connecting it to 10 gauge. This is made for 10 gauge wire, it will work. So first I stripped both ends and it's just enough to fit inside this crimp connector. So what you wanna do first is put it inside the crimp connector but put it only on one side on one half of the crimp connector because we can only do one wire at a time. Then stick the wire in and then press down. But make sure that you hold the wire there so it doesn't move while you're pushing down. And this is what it should look like. Now that we have this half done, we can put the tool on the other half of the crimp connector and put the other wire inside of it. Just like that. And try to hold the wire while you're doing this so it doesn't fall out. This is what it should look like. It's very important though to check because it should be solid if you do it right. And that looks good. This is the type of insulation that you don't heat up. So it's done, this is good. For the next demonstration, we're going to connect a 16 gauge wire to its appropriate connector that goes to, I think, a 3 8 inch stud hole. And these ones are pretty simple. You just have to make sure that you strip the right amount off and then you verify that it's in the hole. and then use the crimp tool to smash it. And that's it. This one has heat shrink though, so we can put it over the stove. 
And this is what it should look like. You guys can notice how the heat shrink really conforms to the shape of the connector and to the wire. That's when you buy a high quality heat shrink. That's why it's so important to use the right stuff. If you were to buy cheap heat shrink, it does not look as pretty. Now let's do a quick six gauge terminal connector. So first strip the wire and it should look like this. This one has a really thick insulation so it looks a little funny but it works. It also has a small hole where you can see if the wire made it all the way through. And it does, it came right up to the hole so this is a perfect amount of conductor. So we could use my other methods but I'm going to use this tool because I love it. This connector is too big for that tool so I need to use something else. Bam, just like that. Oh, that's perfect. I love it. Looks perfect. And I just found some heat shrink for this size of wire so we can use it. Make sure that you do not put the heat shrink all the way up this far or something silly. You want it right about there. And that's the finished product. It looks really nice and clean. Now we're going to do an Anderson power pull connector. So we have a 12 gauge wire and we stripped it and it fits perfectly just like that. And this is the crimper that I like to use with Anderson power poles. Also with the Anderson power pole, you can see if the wires made it all the way through. And this is how it should look inside of the crimper. And then you just squeeze and that is a solid crimp. And so in order to put this little crimp connector inside the power pole thing, I like to look at the picture online to figure out which way it's supposed to go because there's only one way. So look at the picture and then line up the connector like this and then push it really hard inside and it should snap together. All right guys, I finally got it in there. After it's in there, you need to feel it and test if it will pull out. If it's strong and doesn't pull out, it's good to go. And after you do one, you can do a second one and put them together. Just like this, and you can also buy the pins that fit inside that little hole and it'll hold them together permanently. And then you can also add another two wires on the other end and then you can fit these two together. Don't fit these two together until you have the wires and crimpers in all of them and then they will push together and fit really snug. And that's it. That's how you crimp an Anderson pole power pole connector. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I hope this helps out a lot of you guys, especially beginners scared to do this kind of stuff. Once you get it down, it's very easy and actually kind of fun. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, this one's gonna be a pain in the butt. We have to solder a XT60 connector and we need to use this kind because it's a battery or the source. But what you don't wanna do is get the battery hot when you're doing this and you wanna do one lead at a time so you don't short the battery out. So this is a little challenging. And then we wanna put the XT60 connector in a vise. And an important reason to have this connector inside of a vise is to dissipate heat from the soldering connection. We want it to get hot enough so that it makes a good solder joint, but we don't wanna get hot enough where it will melt all of this plastic. So right now I have it held in place with one hand, but how am I going to put the soldering iron and solder on here? So what I like to do when doing these XT60 connectors is I like to tin the tip of the soldering iron after I clean it and get a nice little wallop of solder on there. And then I put it directly on the joint while the wire is inside. So it's not working. <laughs> so I'm gonna tin the tip and then put some solder inside the joint and see if that helps because this one is not working. So now we tin the tip and we put some solder inside the XT60. So we're gonna heat up the XT60 and then push it inside there when it's hot and molten and not for, for very long. And now you gotta let it cool because it's super duper hot. And that's what it should look like. Now we can put the heat shrink on all the way. Now this lead will be protected after we heat it up. And this is what it should look like when you heat up the heat shrink. Now that this lead is protected and heat shrinked, now we can do the positive lead. So first let's tin the tip. And then we can put it inside of our vise again. So to do this properly, heat up the connector first till it's liquid and then heat up this at the same time and then push that wire in there. Make sure it doesn't get too hot. Make sure it gets shiny so it does a good one and then take it off. <sighs> this one was good and it's shiny all the way around so there's a good soldering job but this heat shrink got too hot. So I can't really move it. So we need to wait till it cools and then cut off this piece and then push it up. 
And this is what it looks like after you clean up the heat shrink. So part of it was already hardened and small, so I cut it off and then I slid the good part up and then I heated it up. So this is what it should look like. This is a completed soldering job for an XT60 connector. The hardest part with these is making it so it doesn't heat up this and melt it because you want it to get hot enough so solder can flow but you don't want to get in so hot that it damages the connector and damage the battery because the heat can conduct through this wire into the battery if it gets too hot it can damage the battery pack so that's not good and this was short wires because I messed it up from a crash a long time ago and I never got to it but yeah this is what it should look like and this is good